Well, hello and welcome to the New American Colleges and Universities College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Elizabeth and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening this evening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. There are two additional sessions after this, this hour. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash NACU. I'd now like to turn it over to Michelle from the New American Colleges and Universities who will introduce this evening. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And thank you to everyone for joining us tonight to learn more about the campuses that are part of the New American Colleges and Universities. You might be wondering what brings together all of these colleges and universities. Well, they all combine liberal arts, professional preparation, and civic engagement. And why are these things important? Well, professional preparation, that's pretty easy. Many people go to college because they want to be prepared for a career. Students at our campuses connect the classroom to the real world through coursework, internships, and other methods so they can graduate with the skills and experience that they need for their chosen professions. But we all know the job market changes really rapidly, so the most successful people can adapt to these changes if they have a strong foundation in skills such as reading, writing, problem solving, and critical thinking that can apply to many different jobs. The liberal arts courses you'll take help you to build these skills. Lastly, civic engagement at our campuses helps students achieve a sense of fulfillment by applying their skills to help others or to find solutions to issues in our world. But each campus is also very unique, and so let's hear from them now. I'll turn it over to Sarah at Russell Sage first. Thank you so much, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Barrett, and I am the Director of Undergraduate Enrollment at Russell Sage College. I'm gonna briefly share my screen here and hope all goes well. <laughs> Russell Sage College is uh, two campuses. We are located in Troy and Albany, New York. So, oops, so not too far. We are uh, about 15 minutes apart between our campuses. And what's nice is the fact that students have the opportunity to utilize both campuses. So we say we're a small college with big opportunities for students. As I mentioned, one of the most interesting things about Russell Sage College is the fact that we have two distinct campuses. You see a, a picture on the left here of our call campus center on our Albany campus and to the right Bush Memorial on our Troy campus. We say that students have the opportunity to learn, explore and connect between the two. Our campuses look very different. Our Albany campus is in a residential neighborhood called the Helderberg, Helderberg neighborhood of part of Albany. Very much green space, room to roam. Quad is beautiful right now with the fall leaves. Where our Troy campus is right in the heart of downtown Troy. So it very much has mom and pop shops, uh, coffee, there's music, there's activities all the time. There's even a record store, which is one of my favorite spots uh, in the city of Troy. At Russell Sage College, we offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. What's great about our undergraduate programs is the fact that many of them lead into graduate coursework. So if you are interested in physical therapy, occupational therapy, we have that through Sage Graduate School. A lot of our programs are also interdisciplinary. We're gonna take a lot of different majors and put them together. We have a great program called Criminal Justice, Law and Behavioral Science. And again, it's looking at criminal justice, legal studies, psychology and sociology. So no matter what pathway you choose in those four disciplines, they're all interconnected and you're gonna have experience in them all. We also have pre-professional programs. We have linked agreements with Albany Law School. Uh, if you're looking to earn your Juris Doctorate, we also have a physician's assistant program with Albany Medical College, which is right across the street. Couldn't be any more convenient. Our programs are divided into four schools, arts and sciences, education, health sciences, and management. Our top five undergraduate programs include nursing, childhood education, graphic media and design, the criminal justice, law and behavioral science program, as well as health sciences. 
in coming to campus, I always encourage our students and our guests to, to have a conversation. Why do our students love Russell Sage College? One of the things that you'll hear as a resounding <laughs> example is the community. As a small school, we have 2,600 students, both graduate and undergraduate. You know the students in your classroom. You know your peers. You work on projects together. You see them at the basketball game. You have a very, have a very close community. And that's not just within our students. We really love that our students get to know our faculty and that our faculty get to know our students. The wonderful opportunity when our class size is, our average class size is 16 and 11 to one for a faculty student ratio. They get to know you. If you're a student looking to hang in the back of the class, we make it really difficult for you. Again, study abroad is a very important aspect to our programs and ongoing diversity efforts. As I mentioned, average class size, student ratio, this is one of our classrooms. It's a beautiful space. It's called the Renaissance Room. And as you can see, there's not many students in the classroom. So it really allows for a lot of opportunity to ask questions, have a dialogue, and really get to know one another. And of course, one of the things that I hope you're getting the feel for for Russell Sage College is the fact that 98% of our first year students feel Sage is a welcoming, approachable, and knowledgeable community. As I mentioned previously, no matter what major you choose to partake in, all of our majors have a uh, internship opportunity. We require those internships. We want to put you in the real world, get you into your field, and get you that experience. So whether you're looking to be a nurse, you have over 750 clinical hours to complete, of course, student teaching for our education students, and being in the Capital District right in New York, we have a lot of opportunities with businesses, firms, nonprofits, everything in between. So we always love that our students have the opportunity to step out of the classroom and into the real world. Of course, academics is just part of the college experience and we want our students to be enriched and having a plentiful student life activities. We have over 60 different clubs on campus and 21 different teams. We are division three and part of Empire Eight. Our most popular sports include soccer, volleyball, women's golf, and this past year, we just added baseball and esports. Of course, these clubs offer a lot of leadership opportunities. We encourage students to be the president, even the secretary of the clubs that we have on campus. And of course, every student is uh, suggested to participate in community service. And most of the time, that is part of our coursework. We're very proud to announce that we were ranked number nine as top performers in social mobility by US News and World Reports, meaning our students graduate, our Pell eligible students are graduating. We've been named a College of Distinction for New York, as well as specific programs in nursing, business, and education. Russell Sage Co College offers substantial support for students, for first year students up to 22,000 and for our transfer students up to 18,500. And looking to start an application with Russell Sage, we are on the Common App. We also have our application on our website at sage.edu. What we look for are your transcripts, a letter of recommendation, and this year we've made our essay optional. We're also test optional as well. So if you haven't taken your SAT or your ACT, you're doing just fine. And I always encourage students to stay in touch. We're on an app called Zemi. It is free to download. Zemi is a wonderful way. It looks very much like Instagram. Allows you to be part of our campus community and see Russell Sage from a distance if you're unable to make it to campus. Thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, Sarah. And now I'll turn it over to Cynthia from University of Laverne. everyone. My name is Cynthia Ramirez. I am an admissions counselor for the University of Laverne. I think I already skipped a slide here. Um, but we are a small um, liberal, 
liberal arts private university and so we have about 2500 students we offer about 40 plus academic majors and we also offer 70 plus clubs and organizations uh, so we're definitely very much on the smaller end in terms of small private in, in terms of private universities so we're just going to jump into um just give you kind of an idea of where we're located we are in the city of laverne in southern california um so essentially we are 30 miles east of the la area uh, so some of the things that our students are doing over the weekend on vacation time is they're heading out to LA, they're heading out to the beaches. Um, we're near Disneyland, we're very fortunate. Uh, so some of them will head out to downtown uh, Disney or they have Disney passes. Uh, we also have students going up to Big Bear, Mount Baldy, uh, Palm Springs is not too far and then San Diego is just a little bit further out. So um, although we are in a small suburb area, mm -hmm. we definitely are near all of these big um, big, um, big, bigger city that our students can explore again over the weekend on vacation. So just to give you an idea of where we're at. All of our academic programs are now listed on the um, slide that you're seeing right here. Some of our top programs are psychology, criminology, educational studies, kinesiology, and business. Um, but when I say top major, I don't mean impacted. Um, once again, we are a small private university. So luckily and fortunately enough, you guys do have the flexibility of actually taking your first two years and focusing on your general education courses before honing in on a specific major. Uh, so you can come in decided, you're more than welcome to do that, or you can come in undeclared and then take those two years to figure that out. You guys will work, You each student will work closely with an academic advisor in terms of setting your academic plan um, to meet your four-year graduation goal. Okay, so again, even if you come in with a declared major and you, should, you decide that that's not what you envisioned it, you will have the opportunity of changing it. For some of our overachievers, if you want a double major, that you can also do that as well, or major and minor as well. So again, there's a huge flexibility in terms of what you can do. For most of the programs that are listed on here, you will be required to take an internship. Um, like uh, like other schools, the hope is that you will get some hands-on experience um, in the outside world, right? And also to really figure out what type of career, what type of job you will hope to apply for post graduation. Um, this will really help narrow down those narrow down those options for you and really get a clearer picture of what you can do. Um, for some of our professors, you can also embark on working with them on their research, um, or again, they may have connections for you outside within our community for you to get a head start. Moving on, we also offer 70 plus clubs, clubs and organizations for you to get involved in. We offer Greek Life, we offer CAB, which is a campus activities board. Uh, they're the ones that plan all these fun social events and they're also a uh, paid position, so it's like a student job. And um, we also have our ASUOB, which is our student government. Um, so we highly encourage uh, our students to get involved. Most of our students are involved in at least one thing on campus and um, that's really our our campus is really tightly knit. We tend to know all this. We tend to find someone that we know just going to class. Normally you have to give yourself a couple more minutes to get to and from class because you're bound to run into someone that you know, have a conversation. Um, and that's really how we all get pulled into in terms of getting involved in something, right? And it allows you to network, build social skills, leadership skills. Um, and again, just also have that fun side of college, right? We are definitely so focused on getting a career, but we also encourage our students to get involved and develop those skills um, that you can really employ at, um, in your career when you graduate. We are also a division three university. So we offer nine men's and nine women's teams. All of our coaches information is online. If you wanted to set up a meeting, discuss you know, what, what playing at the college level would look like. Okay, so these are all just some examples of getting involved on our campus before we move on. We also offer living on campus. We do not require any of our students to live on campus, but we highly encourage it. So 60% of our students are commuters and 40% live on campus. So a lot of our students do come from the local areas, um, maybe 30, 40 minutes at most. Um, 
But if not, again, even closer than that, if they do decide to live on campus, uh, you would be living in Citrus Hall, which are the pictures that we're seeing now, right? So all of our incoming students would live mm -hmm. in Citrus Hall, and the hope is that they will get to know one another. Um, the hope is that they will um, build community, just really get to know the students that you're going to see mm -hmm. within your classes and the students that you would potentially graduate with in the next couple years, okay? Moving on, we are going to touch a little bit on financial aid in the application process before finishing up here. 96% of our students receive some sort of financial aid. Number th one thing that scares our students away, right, is the, the fact that they may not be able to afford it. So we, knowing that, we try to offer as much scholarship as possible. So we will offer merit-based scholarships anywhere from 10 to $30,000 based mainly on your GPA. We are also a test optional university. So we do not require you to submit an SAT or an ACT, but we, if you feel like it will strengthen your application, feel free to submit that, okay? And then we will also offer any need-based grants after evaluating your FAFSA or your California Dream Act to see if there's any other aid that we can provide. And then lastly, here is how to apply. Our priority deadline is February 1st, but we are a ruling admissions institution. So we tend to work with our students all year long up until the spaces are filled up. You may submit your online application via the Common App or our Laverne website, and you will need to submit a personal statement, transcripts, a $50 application fee and a letter recommendation. However, if you have a college board or an ACAC fee waiver, we will gladly accept that. And last but not least, so this is how you can stay connected, right? So you can visit our website for any webinars, set up a one-on-one -on -one, um, or any um, online um, virtual events that we'll be hosting in the fall. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Cynthia. And now we will turn it over to Christine from Merrimack College. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Virtually Merrimack College. Uh, my name is Christine Carroll. I'm Associate Director of Admission uh, with Merrimack, and we are located in North Andover, Massachusetts, so just about 25, 30 minutes north of Boston and just shy of the New Hampshire border. Um, so really great access to internship opportunities in the city, uh, job opportunities, networking, um, and then obviously all the fun things that the city of Boston has to offer. This is an aerial shot of our campus. Campus. We are in what I would describe as a vibrant suburban area, so still a lot going on in terms of restaurants, shopping, movie theaters. Uh, we're only a mile down the road from the commuter rail, which goes right into Boston. We have an off-campus shuttle, which will bring you there, as well as various areas on campus. Um, but we are very much a residential college. Uh, so a little more in terms of quick facts about us. We are about 4,000 undergraduate students and about 1400 graduate students. So um, in terms of the size, we're more of a mid-sized campus um, and our students come from 48 different states, uh, 40 different countries, 35 different states. So we're really excited for the growth that's happening there. 73% um, of our students live on campus. So if you're looking for a really active campus community, um, that is definitely who we are. We are not a suitcase school. Students are packing up and heading home on the weekends. Um, so there is a lot going on from division one athletics to you know, 60 different, uh, over 60 different student clubs, organizations, and then you know, fun kind of one-off things like game night, movie nights, concerts, um, there's a lot for you to be involved in. Um, in terms of what our students are doing in the classroom, so average class size is 22 to 16 to 1 student faculty ratio. So if you really appreciate, you know, hands-on classes, getting to know your faculty, that's a big part of our campus community. In terms of ways we support our students through the academic options. So every student when they come to Merrimack has three advisors. Kind of think of it as like your own little team. So you'll get your academic advisor who's going to be a faculty member in one of the programs you might be involved in, um, helping you with course selection, maybe you want to add a minor, or you think you're dropping a class, um, and they'll also make sure you're staying on track for graduation. Uh, in terms of career prep, our students get a career advisor as well, who you'll actually start meeting with freshman 
year. So we really start that conversation early and often. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to know what you want to do with the rest of your life, but it's really about setting up a stick for success. So getting you used to, you know, resume writing, used to interviewing, how do you network? How do you, you know, basically kind of sell yourself to employers? Um, that's a lot of what we kind of prep our students for. So when you do get to that point of getting an internship or a job, you really feel ready. Um, our students who work with their career advisor are guaranteed an internship opportunity. So we really want to make sure you have that hands-on experience. We have five different academic schools here at Merrimack. So first you're seeing our Girard School of Business. This is our largest school on campus. Um, houses a variety of different concentrations you can be involved in. Um, entrepreneurship and small business management and hospitality management are our newest, uh, but we have a wide variety that students can choose from. Next is our Winston School of Education and Social Policy. So that includes K through 12 education, as well as STEM education and moderate disabilities. It also is home to our human development program. Um, so that is great if you're thinking about you want to work with students, maybe you want to work in the community or school setting, but not necessarily as a teacher. Uh, and then we also have our criminology and criminal justice program, uh, as well as a police academy on campus for students who are interested in going that route. Next is our School of Health Sciences. It's our fastest growing school on campus. It's home to our direct entry nursing program, as well as our three plus two direct entry masters in athletic training. Next is our School of Science and Engineering. So again, obviously all the sciences, health science, um, excuse me, life sciences, hard sciences, our engineering, computer science programs. It's also home to newer programs such as neuroscience and data science. Um, so a lot to choose within the STEM fields. And then lastly, our school of liberal arts. So kind of think of everything else. Um, so our humanities, as well as it's actually home to our Discover program. So if you're undecided, which is majority of students, to be honest, um, you can come in very much undeclared and you'll be a part of our Discover program. So you'll work with a faculty advisor who works specifically with our undeclared students and really working with you to help you choose a major, making sure, again, you're still staying on for track for graduation, um, but you that time to explore different areas. Uh, you actually don't have to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year, so it really gives you a little time to kind of figure things out. And then on top of that, we have a variety of different minors that students can add on as well. In terms of our application process, we are on the Common App. It's a free application. Uh, average GPA is about a B, and we are a test-blind school, so we do not require SAT or ACT scores for any of our majors. And for this year, that also continues with nursing as well. Uh, we have our early action one deadline coming up next week on November 15th. Those students will hear back in the beginning of December. We have early action two in January for students who need a little more time. And then after that, we're rolling, which means as applications come in, we'll just start cranking out decisions. So it's really about what application decision is best for you. Uh, and then lastly, looking at financial aid, we do two forms of gift aid, both merit scholarship based on academic uh, experiences and journey, as well as need-based grants from information that we get from the FAFSA. That's all you need to do in order to be um, looked at for all of our financial aid. And definitely reach out to us. We have both in-person and virtual options for us. And I'll make sure to leave my information in the chat box. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Christine. Now we will turn it over to Roger Williams University. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and thank you all for being here. Uh, so welcome. My name is Kyler Jasanis. I'm one of the associate directors of admission at Roger Williams University, uh, which is a comprehensive school based in Bristol, Rhode Island. We have a beautiful oceanfront campus, as you can see on the screen. We're about 25 minutes south of Providence. 25 minutes north of Newport and an hour south of Boston. So it's a really dense area for fun things to do, but also internships and job opportunities and just a beautiful place to be. Um, you can see kind of our average statistics on the top, but we are a medium sized school with small classes that are always taught by faculty and you always start in your program right away. Uh, I think one of the best things about Roger Williams is the wide array of academic programs that we have um, for a school of 4,000 undergrads. You can see the colleges we have here. Um, our top five majors in terms of number of students in them are criminal justice, marine biology, psychology, marketing, and then engineering. Um, and then our biggest undergraduate school is our school of business. 
Um, but our students are really well spread out across our 50 majors and almost 80 minors. Um, our school of business is our largest, but it's just 20% of our undergrads. So it's not like everyone you're running to at Roger Williams is a business student and criminal justice as our biggest major. Um, it's only about 7% of our students. Again, you're not right. It's not like everyone you're running to is a CJ student. Um, so if you have a passion because of the wide array of programs that we offer, you can likely find a path here with all the support and experience opportunities to get there. So if you know you really want to do something for social justice, but you're not sure what, you can come to Roger Williams and major in cultural studies and combine that with a major in criminal justice and legal studies. If you decide you want to work towards the legal uh, system, be more equitable there. You can do it with educational studies and public policy to go on educational policy. So it's like lots of routes you can do and passions you combine. The largest major of our freshman class every year is undeclared liberal arts. We have a lot of students coming to explore, um, a lot of opportunities for you to do that with the schools that we have and the experiences that we have on our campus. Uh, I'm a Roger Williams alum and one of the things that I really loved about the school was how involved it was and all the experiential learning opportunities that I had. Um, so before the pandemic, we had a top 30 study abroad program in the country in terms of percentage of students that go abroad. Um, I personally went twice Every single student, every single major is guaranteed access to at least one study abroad program, but most have multiple. Um, and we give out scholarships for study abroad as well. So any student in any family has access to be able to do an abroad trip. Um, we also require all of our students to do some sort of community engagement work um, at some point through their four-year journey with a deep dive into helping a community partner as part of our social justice mission of our university. Um, and our median student leaves about two or three internships. I personally had three, so there's lots of hands-on learning opportunities. Um, so besides the academic and experiential learning opportunities, we are a really strong holistic campus because of the vibrant student life that we offer. Um, Roger Williams ranks towards the top in the country for the quality of our campus food, consistently in the top 5% overall and sometimes top 10 overall. I can tell you I've been eating at Roger Williams for 10 years and I absolutely love it there. Um, we're also ranked as one of the safest campuses in the country, so a really good place to exist there. Um, over half our students play intramural sports, average students volume three to four clubs. Like I mentioned, Providence and Newport are really close. It's just a really great area to be um, and a great student body to be a part of. Um, in terms of outcomes, we have a lot of different accelerated graduate programs for students to consider, like a four plus one master's of business, four plus one criminal justice, construction management, psychology, architecture, law options for students. 98% um, of our students go into jobs or grad school in the first six months. You see some different employers that students have gone. Um, so you can kind of see the opportunities that we have there. Every student, every major has a career and professional development advisor uh, you meet with starting in your first year to kind of help you along that path. So a lot of support for life after graduation for you. Um, in terms of the admission process for Roger Williams, we try to make it as easy as possible for everyone. So we just have two different deadlines of early action, regular decision. Um, the only benefit to applying earlier is you find out earlier. There's no other incentive or anything like that. We want students and families to apply when it fits them best, when they feel they have enough information on Roger Williams to know this is a place they wanna be and they feel they can submit their best application forward. So apply whenever it fits you best in between these deadlines as we also roll. Um, we're just a common app school, required transcript and our test optional have been so for 11 years now. Um, and we are truly generally optional in the sense there is no major program or scholarship you are exempt from if you elect to not submit scores. There's no work to do in lieu of submitting test scores. Um, and if you do choose some of your test scores, you think they're a good reflection um, of your capabilities, they can only help your merit scholarship, they cannot hurt. So we calculate merit scholarship with your test scores and without, and then take whichever one's higher. Um, and on scholarships, we guarantee our scholarships for all four years. You can see some information there on the right of the screen. Um, but thank you so much for your time um, and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Caitlin from University of New Haven. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Caitlin Locke, Director of Undergraduate Recruitment at University of New Haven. Thank you for having me this evening. University of New Haven is a small to medium sized private comprehensive institution located in Connecticut. 
This past year, we celebrated 100 years, so it was our centennial year. Uh, even though it happened during the pandemic, we still were able to celebrate that milestone by opening a brand new academic building on our campus called the Burgamy Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. And the main theme for this building, which is a major hallmark of all programs of study at University of New Haven, is the idea of, of hands-on or experiential learning. So this new building adds brand new spaces. Um, as you see in some of the photos here, things like a new communication studio, a space for esports, competitive video gaming, both for our esports and gaming major, um, and for our uh, club team and our division two esports team as well. Uh, additional maker space, and then lots of spaces for collaborative learning and uh, socializing on our college campus. So we are located in West Haven, Connecticut, which is just a few miles outside of the city of New Haven. Back when we were originally founded back in 1920, we actually were in New Haven. We were founded by Yale University and Northeastern University. And we focused originally on just entrepreneurial studies like uh, business and engineering, but a lot has changed since then. Um, but our location, I think, gives students the best of both worlds. You have that suburban residential campus in West Haven, but you have the city of New Haven right down the road with all of its fantastic amenities. We're famous for pizza, if you don't know. And then we're halfway between New York City and Boston. So we're just a train ride away from either of those major Northeast cities. Now, in terms of our size, we are a small to medium sized school with just over 5,000 undergraduate students. We keep our class sizes small, so average being about 20 students not a school with really big lecture halls and all of our classes are taught by faculty members. We have lots to pick from in terms of academics. So with over a hundred different programs of study, it gives our students so much flexibility and so much choice in terms of determining, you know, what it is that they'd like to do for, for their academic program. In addition, lots of minors and certificate programs and then lots of graduate degrees. And while grad school might seem far off, we have a big focus on trying to figure out how best to support you for, you know, not just your next four years, but really your next, your next 30 or 40 out there in the field. So it starts right at the beginning. You might be offered entry into one of our dual degree programs, which combines your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. You will absolutely be paired up with our, center, our career development center, which has been recognized nationally by Princeton Review for the fantastic opportunities and services that it provides to our students. And you'll see, you know, over 95% of recent grads from class of 2019 were within six months of graduating employed in a related field or graduate school. So we're very proud of what our students go on to do after graduation. We're the New Haven Chargers. And here you'll see a little bit of a breakdown of what our student body looks like. Uh, right now, we see about 40% of our students coming from the state of Connecticut and about 60% coming from out of state. Now with over 100 different academic programs, like I said, lots of choice and lots of options, but it's also okay to come in undecided as well. You can explore the different areas while you're here. A couple of our most popular majors, things like forensic psychology, marine biology, uh, music technology in our arts and sciences college, uh, sports management, hospitality, is, uh, hospitality and tourism in our business college. Um, we're very famous for our Henry Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences. Our engineering college also houses programs like computer science and our cybersecurity and networks program. And then in our School of Health Sciences, our dental hygiene program year after year is very popular for us. We do require internships for over 85% of our majors on campus. For students that maybe don't have time or the ability to do an internship, they're required to either do a study abroad experience, service learning, um, or faculty mentored research. Lots of options for study abroad, including our own campus in Prado, Italy. It's right in the Tuscany region. Close to 200 clubs and organizations on our campus, including our Charger Marching Band, which has close to 300 members. We're a highly residential campus, and we just added a new college village with brand new apartments for juniors, seniors, and grad students, just a five minute walk from main campus. We're division two for athletics, 18 varsity level teams. And then in terms of the application process, we're a common application school. We require the official high school transcript, one letter of recommendation, 
And then we're test optional. We have a no harm test policy. So if you send your scores and they help your admissions decision or scholarship, great, we'll use them. If they're not helping either one of those areas, uh, we will kind of wipe those from your application for you. We offer a binding option, which is early decision one with a December 1st deadline. And then we offer a non-binding early action deadline with a December 15th deadline. And then from there, students are automatically considered for anywhere from 10 to $28,000 in merit scholarship right at the time of their application with room for a few of our additional scholarships, uh, things like marching band, honors program, portfolios, and others. And then we can add need-based financial aid on top of that. I hope to welcome you all to campus for hosting our on-campus open houses this November and December. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Caitlin. And now we have time for a few questions for the panelists this evening. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with the first question here. And if we wanna go in the same order that you presented, feel free to respond to. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? The advice that I most often give to students is be open. Open to all sorts of schools, small, large, private, public, there's a lot of different institutions. And until you step foot on campus, get to know the, the community, you really don't know. So be open. Just to add on to what she said, um, I would also say visiting the campuses, right? So getting an idea of what the campus is like, what the student culture is, is you know, if you're not at home, you're gonna be at school. Um, so you wanna be the most comfortable you can and um, you will only get, feel, get that confidence if you're able to visit the campuses and get a feel for yourself. Uh, my biggest piece of advice is to make sure that you still enjoy this process and enjoy, you know, your high school experience. Uh, for those of you who will be either doing this right now or next year in their senior year, um, it can definitely be overwhelming and stressful, uh, but you still want to make that time to enjoy your high school experience, especially after everything we've been through to make sure you enjoy those moments. Um, the, the college process isn't going anywhere, so don't worry about that, but you definitely want to make sure you're still enjoying your high school career. My piece of advice is just to be okay with change, change within yourself, change once you pick a college and where you go. Um, the process of selecting a college is going, you're going to learn a lot about yourself and things are going to change for you. You're going to figure out what you want, what you don't want in a college and on a campus. And when you get to a school opportunities, it's going to be a big change for you. So just learn to kind of be okay with that and adjust and be dynamic um, and enjoy the process. My piece of advice would be don't hesitate to communicate with us. If you have questions about, you know, our policies, our forms of admission, different majors that we have, um, you, you usually have a direct contact within many of our offices that you can reach out to and get your questions answered. We're happy to connect with you and meet with you. Fantastic. And I think we have time for another question. So um, let me go to the next one here. What is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? And we'll go back to Sarah from Russell Sage if we want to start from the top again. Sure. I think one myth that I hear most often being at a private school is the fact that the sticker price is the price, the final tuition. And that is far from true, as we've heard everyone discuss their institutional aid, merit scholarships, and different opportunities. Again, be open. You might see that sticker price, but know that that's likely not what you'll pay at the end. Um, yeah, I completely agree with what Sarah said. Um, just give each school an opportunity. I also think sometimes you close yourself off feeling like maybe you won't be admitted or you feel like you're not good enough because of things that you maybe have heard from other people. Um, so just give yourself that opportunity to really get the full picture of a school by just applying and give your, giving yourself that chance. 
Oh, I think something that's, you know, important to know and kind of myth is, you know, we're people too, and we're excited to be going through this process with you. We're excited to admit students to our institutions. We are looking for opportunities and reasons to offer admission. And so don't be afraid to brag about yourself, you know, tell us what you're doing, share all the exciting things, you know, include those extra letters of recommendation, or, you know, I've had students be in the local paper and they send a copy and that's super exciting to see. Again, I I think there's so much, you know, hoopla and talk around selectivity and admission rates and all that, but I think it's so important to remember that college admission counselors are, are on your side. We want to work with, we want to help you, and we want you at our campuses. And so don't be afraid to, you know, brag about yourself and give us every opportunity to um, admit you to our institutions. What I would say is don't discount the value of a liberal arts education. I think that's something that is routinely knocked, whether in the news or talking to people. Um, but liberal arts will teach you a lot, and it's hard to articulate in a 30-second soundbite, but just the critical thinking skills, ability to work as a team, like the leadership and their personal growth that you'll get from a liberal arts education um, is something that will be a lifelong value to you. So don't knock it until you get to experience it. Yeah, and along those lines, I'd say, you know, don't feel pressured to know exactly what it is you need to major in. You don't have to know right now at 17 or 18 years old what you want to do for the next 40 years. College is a great place to explore and learn about new careers and majors and options that, you know, maybe high school didn't present to you. So um, use this time to, to keep an open mind and don't feel pressured to put, you know, a major on your college application. You, you have some time. Thank you so much. And we do have time for one additional question. And so I guess if we start at the top again, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I hope that walking away from this, uh, students are able to remember that Russell Sage College is co-educational on both campuses. I don't think I mentioned that before, so it's my opportunity to throw it in. Uh, we have gone co-educational in fall 2020. And of course, our two campuses allow for more opportunity where you get the opportunity, where you can use the dining hall on both campuses, use the facilities, the gym, of course, all of the academic majors. Pick up a class on the opposite campus, take the shuttle and hop over. Um, I would hope that our students, you know, just remember that um, we really are there to support them. You know, we're a small private university. Um, there's so many opportunities around the area, although we are in a suburb area. Um, we're fortunate enough to be a much larger city if that's what they're searching for or if they do want to be in a small town. So just know that we're, um, we're able to provide those opportunities for you. Something I hope that everyone takes away about Merrimack College is just kind of that that level of wraparound support we give our students in terms of, you know, that that team of advisors, the career advisor, academic advisor, oh, and I forgot to mention the academic success, um, success coaches that students all get. So there's a lot of opportunity to really offer guidance and help and just know that you don't have to figure out the college experience, you're on your own, um, that you have kind of this, again, built in um, support system that is there to work with you. I'd say Roger Williams University is a beautiful campus with amazing food um, and just an incredible experience and opportunities for you. And for University of New Haven, one thing that stands out to me is that, you know, we're the smaller size school that sometimes feels like a bigger school just because of everything we have to offer. But, you know, at the same time, you're still afforded those small class sizes and personalized attention and, and lots of support. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back, this, check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There are two more sessions this evening, and you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash NACU. Thank you, everyone.